twice, twice in the last 24 hours, Senate Republicans have blocked legislation aimed at boosting election security. I'll speak with Congressman Eric Swalwell of the Judiciary and Intelligence Committees, and our correspondents and analysts will have full coverage of the day's top stories. Let's go straight to Capitol Hill and our senior congressional correspondent, Manu Raju. Manu, this Senate Intel report is part of a two-year ongoing investigation, and it's raising a lot of red flags. Yeah, that's right. Urging states and the federal government to do more, saying that the Russian government exploited divisions between state governments and the federal government and saying that that this is something that could needs to be shored up in the elections ahead. And one of the recommendations that they do make here is to ensure that there are backup paper ballots throughout state election systems to ensure that if there's any nefarious activity, that there's something to back it up to make sure that those election results are, are sufficient and that they all they are accurate portrayal of how voters actually came down. Now, the committee also found they said no evidence of Russian actors actually trying to manipulate vote tallies, but they say that the intelligence community does not have a window into exactly how votes may have been affected back in the 2016 elections, but they make very clear in this 67-page bipartisan report that there was extensive activity that was directed by the Russian government through 24, between the years of 2014 and 2017, all designed to explore the seams between the federal government and the state government, urging those seams to be closed. Now, the FBI director, Christopher Ray, Ray, has been sounding similar alarms as he did today, warning that the Russian threat still exists heading into 2020. We expect much of the same in 2020, especially with new cyber tools that are continuing to fall in the hands of adversaries who would do us harm. Things like some of the services that are sold on the dark net, or some of the DDoS capabilities that have become available to an even wider range of would-be hacktivists. Now, there, there have been several bills that have been moving through the Senate that Democrats in particular have been pushing. There have been some bipartisan bills that have some that have been done on a party-line basis. And today, Democrats, we again try to renew efforts to move those election security bills, but they were blocked by Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. It's just a highly partisan bill from the same folks who spent two years hyping up a conspiracy theory about President Trump and Russia. Now, what McConnell has been arguing is that the efforts that have already been undertaken are essentially enough. Enough money has been spent. He argues that in 2018, they did a good job of, of securing the election infrastructure and further legislation certainly is not necessary, but he is facing pressure from some within his own ranks, some Republicans and a growing number of Democrats demanding action in the wake of the Mueller report and the wake of concerns raised by Christopher Wray. The question is, will the majority leader move off of his opposition at the moment? He's saying no because he believes these efforts are duplicative and his view partisan. Wolf. Yeah, Robert Mueller yesterday made it clear he's deeply concerned about this uh, kind of these kinds of cyber attacks going after the elections uh, here in uh, 2020, uh, a day after his testimony. Guys, I've gone through this report you have as well, what, about 64 pages, Select Committee on Intelligence, Russian active measure campaigns, uh, active measures campaigns and interference in the 2016 election. Uh, Jim Baker, give us your major takeaway. So the major takeaway is that there is a significant threat from Russia and from other uh, uh, foreign actors who might try to take advantage of weaknesses in our election system. The, the Senate Intelligence Committee is one of the best committees uh, up on the Hill, and their staff is excellent. And so we need to take this very seriously. They're, they've laid out a bunch of recommendations that we need to think about. And if the majority leader in the Senate is not happy with the legislation uh, that, he, that uh, we were just uh, discussing, then come up with something else. But this needs to be addressed, and we're running out of time. It's a, it's critically, a critical, critically important thing, and we're running out of time. The states need help. You're absolutely right, you know, Sarah. Unlike the House Intelligence Committee, which has seen a lot of drama and partisanship, the Senate Intelligence Committee, these guys work pretty much uh, in tandem, and I think it's reflected in this report. Yeah, I mean, the House Committee became a spectacle in the way that the Senate uh, Committee really did not, and we're seeing this, this is a bipartisan report, and, you know, it's not, it's not a bunch of red meat. These are sort of practical things that you could do to secure our election system. So we're talking about replacing old voter machines. We're talking about increasing the security around voter rolls, encouraging states to resist the urge to move any kind of voting online because those platforms are not secure. Cure. And, you know, it's interesting to, to look through this report at the same day that Mitch McConnell says, no, no, we're
we're good here, everything's secure, because that's certainly not the takeaway from the bipartisan members of this committee. It certainly isn't. Uh, the report says the government simply didn't do enough to warn about all these threats and the vulnerabilities which clearly exist. One committee member, Senator Ron Wyden, a Democrat of Oregon, says the government uh, shouldn't expect local officials to do what the federal government is more qualified to do. He writes this. This is uh, Wyden. We would not ask a local sheriff to go to war against the missiles, planes, and tanks of the Russian army. We shouldn't ask a country election IT employee to fight a war against the full capabilities and vast resources of Russia's cyber army. Uh, does he have a point? Well, he has a point, but up to a point. Because if we learn, the, if, we, if we take some of the lessons we learned dealing with counterterrorism after 9 11, what we realize is there's a role for everybody. The federal government has a role, and state and local authorities have a role to deal because they're the first responders, as we all know. They're the ones that confront people who, who pose a threat uh, most directly sometimes. So it needs to be a, co a coherent, well organized level. A well, well organized response at every level if we're going to try to be effective here. You know, the timing of this report is very significant. It comes a day after Robert Mueller testified, and he warned of all of these threats as well, but that, that didn't necessarily come across during the course of the hearing. Well, you know, we had a full day of hearings, but I do think, you know, the, the one thing we've learned from the two times Bob Mueller has spoken publicly is he has been most forceful in each of those instances that, you know, 10 minute statement he gave. And then when he was appearing before the committees and essentially saying the biggest concern, the biggest takeaway here is that there was a hostile foreign power that interfered in our election and they are going to continue to do that. And we need to take that seriously. And that that's something that everyone on all sides of the aisle should care about. Because at the end of the day, when you go into the ballot box, you cast your vote, you want to walk out and you want to feel confident in American elections. That's what this report is about. And that's, I think, what Robert Mueller wanted everyone to take away after his uh, appearance on the Hill yesterday. And the threat is so significant. This shouldn't be a partisan issue at all. But you notice during the course of the hearings uh, yesterday, few Republicans chose to use any of their time talking to Mueller about this threat. Instead, they were going after his entire Russia investigation. And that's a problem. That's a big problem. So the, I think, you know, for example, Republicans should be worried about this because if there are questions about the security of an election and the, and the, and the, result, uh, and the results and they win, well, they're going to have a cloud over them, right? So they should be worried about that. Secondly, they should not assume that the Russians are always going to be supporting President Trump and his allies. The Russians just want disruption, disorder, and chaos. And however they can achieve that, they will. And they may take a different view about President Trump at the last moment or at any point. The president, his national security officials, the intelligence community, people he's appointed, like Pompeo and Dan Coats, among others, uh, they keep saying this is a huge threat. But we rarely hear that from the president himself. He either ignores it, doesn't talk about it. Why is that? Well, you know, because he believes that if you acknowledge the fact that Russia tried to interfere in our election, that that delegitimizes his victory. It means he got help to become president. But, you know, if you look at it along the way the president has acted alongside this report, I mean, one of its top recommendations is we need to create effective deterrence, which means we need to send a signal to countries that are trying to meddle in our election that we're not going to stand for this. And also we're going to retaliate in ways that are painful and that are costly to you. And, you know, we've seen other members, as, as you pointed out, of the administration talking about things like that, but we have not heard it from the president. And that is sort of stunning when you think about, you know, the, the fact that we are so far along into his presidency and he still can't put aside his own personal grievance about this issue and his own personal feelings to say, we need to do something that's better for the country going forward.